but like all right let's get started on this tier list i think i think i think this tier list is relatively easy to do mainly because we had like a few characters who were just way stronger than the others right so like let me let me actually add a row below okay so uh full bad guy you know i don't think this is uh i don't think this is like some sort of hard like you know hard question or anything you know uh the character overall he, he's just he's just he's just strong as fuck you know um he is the pinnacle of uh he's like kind of like he's like the best character in the game three he's got a little bit of everything he didn't get nerfed too hard um his damage is still there his oki is still good uh still is good screen to screen good carry um overall he is just a good character uh yeah i don't know he didn't get changed a lot he's pretty much uh he's pretty much the same you know uh like even like from game to game he's still very soul bad guy he still has like an old school dust loop and shit you know so it's pretty cool he out of all these characters in the game he feels the most complete the other characters range from like 80 percent to like 50 percent and uh i'll talk more about the characters who are 50 percent when i get to like the lower ranks but uh let's talk about the rest of top five right so rest of top five hey thank you for the follow it's dremo but i feel like the rest of top five is probably pretty easy right you've got you got Ramblethal, probably like Giovanna, Kai, and then like maybe Eno. I I probably put Eno here. I would say these are your top five. These characters feel eighty percent complete. Well, Eno not so much, but her game plan super strong in that beta, so like she feels good. But these three, they feel like they're eighty percent complete as characters, right? Um. Kai has combos, he does good damage, he still plays his Kai game. Uh, DP's fine, you know, like, he just feels like a complete character. Giovanna, her game plan's simple, her game plan still works even with the combo nerfs and shit. So, like, she still feels good. Uh, Ramlethal was, like, the best character last patch, or in the last beta, she's, like, the second best now. Um, again, much like the other characters in this tier, she feels like she's, uh, she's a pretty complete character. You know, uh, I would say Eno is probably the lowest one here. Now for A tier, this is like these are characters that are like pretty good, but they're not like I don't know. They aren't as they aren't as strong as these guys. So I probably put May, Axel, Faust, uh, Leo, Melia. All right. This part, this part's important. Milia players are talking about, constantly talking about how, uh, how Milia's bottom three, you know? Uh, you know, it's the running, it's the running meme. You know, Leffen actually thinks she's bad. Uh, Milia still does Milia shit. You know what I mean? Her blender is still good. Her damage output is fine. Her speed is still high. You know, a lot of the universal nerfs that happen in the game don't really affect her as much, in my opinion. Or they do affect her, but she was already so good before that it doesn't matter that much at the end. Um, I'm not going to say she's top 5 by any means, but I think she's probably, like, close to top 10. Like, she's, she's still strong as fuck. She's still in the top, like, she's still in, like, the top 80%. Well, let me order this. Uh, I think May's probably the best character here. A feels... Probably put Leo here, Ilya here. May feels super strong, right? Uh, Tatsugeki does a ton of damage, super annoying. Um, hard to 6P, you know, overall just a very annoying character, good normals. So I'm pretty sure she can RC Great Yamada attack, so she gets plus frames off of it, you know? So uh, that's pretty fucking good, not gonna lie. Um, her normals are fine, she's got good anti airs. I think i'm trying to think what else like is super good about her um i don't know her kit just feels fine you know like like I, i'm pretty sure she still has overhead kiss you know so like like she still feels like a complete character axel 
Axel's Axel. Uh, he's kind of weird in this game. Like, so I'm someone who plays Axel in all the other Guilty Gear games, right? I, I play Slayer and Axel the most in the other Guilty Gear games. Axel feels kind of weird in this game, where like he still has his shit, but he doesn't have all of it. Like, like I'm pretty sure off counter hit uh, 5P anti air, you can still do, you can still do 6K 2H or not 2H, uh, 2S, but. You don't like get the you you don't get the follow up combo on it right like the the jump cancel uh, axle bomber, so that's like kind of weird. Uh, he plays a lot more like uh, I guess like a Dalsum type character. Like he's way more he's a lot slower, and like your game plan like you're not moving around as much. Um, he's good like he does good damage. His command grab is super obnoxious. Instead of making his command grab easier to see. They just nerf the damage to that to the point that it's basically a normal throw, which I think is fine. I don't think that's that big of a deal. Um, it's a little weird. Uh, he's got the time stop super now, which is super good. I don't know. I'd say he's like right here. I think Leo, you know, I think my Leo placement's fine. That character, he shits out damage. He's got good mix ups. Um, he lost his one combo, his BNB combo, but now he gets turbo Oki, which is super fucking good. Uh, he could switch it between stance super easily now because of uh, uh, because of turbulence. I think that's what it's called, right? Turbulence is the 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 pillar. But yeah, I think he's good. He still has the godlike fireball. He still has two good supers. He has a DP, his flash kick, which I feel like I still think is great. He's got good normals. I think good normals is super important in uh in strive in this game. Good enough that I'd actually maybe put facts above million. Like. I think good normals matter a lot because this game's a lot more grounded and the characters who are good one of the things that they do consistently have is good normals right like this top like this top five like they all have pretty fucking good normals and then even like the top 10 most of these characters have good normals like good spacing normals. besides like milia who's kind of the most rushed down character out of all of them um faust so I play Faust a little bit in the other Guilty Gear games. After the first beta, I didn't play him a lot in this game. I just didn't like the way he felt as much. I didn't even try him that much. I think I played three matches of him in this last beta because I wanted to say I was going to use new characters. So I used the Yuki and uh, Giovanna for the most part. Um, yeah, Faust is, uh, he's not bad. Like his, his he plays, he plays Strive really well because he has big buttons and you want to play that big button game. So I think that's like the best way to do it. Uh, you know, his items are pretty good now. They're not as annoying. Um, like to you, like on like as a house player, like they're good to use. Um, I don't know how his anti airs ended up feeling. I'm sure the 6P buffs had to help him because his 6P seems a lot better. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think they changed the way Scarecrow works as well, but I don't know. I didn't play him enough. I'll, when the game drops and I do like an actual tier list, like in a month after the game drops, I will like probably play him more. Ilya, this character's still top 10 though. Uh, her damage is okay, um, but she still has a coast to coast corner, uh, coast to coast corner combo. Uh, she still has good Oki. She's still fast as fuck. Um, she's just a good character like i i like i think milia players who are saying she's not top 10 are just capping like they're just they have to be fucking lying because this character is just strong as fuck all right let's look at b tier so b tier i'm saying potemkin the goryuki dato i think that's it i think that's what i'm gonna put for b um Actually, actually not. Nah. Actually, I'm not gonna put these two guys in two separate tiers because I think they're fun. I would actually put Chip like here. I would put Zato here. I would put Potemkin there. I would put maybe Chip over Nagoriyuki. So, uh, all right, let's talk about Zato. Uh, I didn't play a lot of Zato, nor did I play against a lot of Zato. But from what I've seen of like watching other streamers and like other content creators and people play, um, character seems pretty solid. Uh, he's a lot better than the first two betas or the first sec or the second beta. 
Um, his damage is good. Our, the the new RC tech seems to help him a lot with his pressure. Um, he seems to do good damage. He has a command grab. His mix-ups seem fine. You know, I don't think there's much else to say. I think his normals are good. I think he controls space really easily, and I think that's really important in this game. So I put him at the top of B tier. I just personally haven't seen enough of him for me to put him in the top in the top ten. Uh, Potemkin. So uh, Potemkin was fucked up <laughs> in that last beta. Um, he was the best character in the game, free. Uh. I said Ramlethal earlier. I really meant Potemkin. I forgot about Potemkin. Yeah, Potemkin was super fucked up on the last beta. Um, almost impossible to beat him if Potemkin knew what he was doing. Ramlethal and Stola right after him. Uh, Potemkin also feels like... He does not feel like one of the more completed characters. Like, he kind of felt like his shit just works because nobody knew how to deal with it. Um, I don't know what else to say. Potemkin shits out damage. Uh, he has one of the best comeback mechanics. In the fact that if you get pop busted, you die. Um, if you jump and he fucking heavenly pop busters you and you're at 50%, you pretty much die. Unless you're like Nagori Yuki or Giovanna. Um, his buttons are fine. You know, I feel like everything about him was good. Um, I just didn't see enough of him or play enough of him to actually see how good he really was. Um, but I think he probably sits around here near the, near the lower bracket of characters. Uh, okay, let's talk about Chip. <laughs> so, Chip's a character that I've kind of gone back and forth with on how good I think he is. Um, part of me thinks Chip's dog shit. Right? Like, I don't know. He just doesn't seem good. Uh, his damage output is like around the same as Milia's. So it's nothing insane. His corner carry is okay. Uh, he is super fast. He's always been super fast. His air movement is still good, which I think is important. Um, however, I feel like a lot of what makes Chip scary in other Guilty Gear games isn't in this game as much. And, uh, his damage isn't high enough to warrant how low health he has. So, I'm pretty sure Chip has the lowest health in the game. If not, he has the lowest guts rating. Uh, either way, he gets blown the fuck up. Like, almost any character. Like, even low damage characters, like, Axel could do 70% to Chip. Like, uh, it's actually one of my biggest issues with the character right now. Um, I think, I think he's too squishy for how much damage he does. And if you're going to make him, like, this squishy, he needs to be, like, the Akuma of Guilty Gear Shrine. Like, if you're going to make him die in a single combo, he needs to be able to kill you in two guesses. You know what I mean? Um, and that's kind of how I feel about it. Uh, besides that, his buttons are fine. You know, everything else is, like, pretty good. I think they buffed Gamma Blade so you don't get blown up for using it. Um, Alpha Blade is actually good, uh, for air movement and shit. I've been watching that. Yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. He seems all right. I'll pop, I'm definitely going to play him more when the game drops because I want to see how good he is and, like, I want to play him myself. Uh, but yeah. So, after Chip is, uh, the Gore Yuki... In my opinion, you could pretty much put Nagoryuki anywhere in this area, almost. Like, I think Potemkin's definitely better than Chip, but I think Nagoryuki could either be in between them or in between them. Uh, Nagoryuki is a fucking nuke, right? He's a walking, talking nuke. He will walk in, he will obliterate you, um, and then he'll leave. Uh, his, his neutral game is also super fucking good, right? It's like the one good thing about him. Well, one of the best things about him, right? His normals are super strong. They cover a lot of space and he does a lot of damage super quickly, right? Uh, some issues he does have though, which they've tried to, they touched up a bit here, but blood mode is still like the worst thing to ever happen to this character. So my biggest issue with the Goryuki is he's a slow character with like no air dash at all not even like a, like an air command dash um he has super jump and that's it uh it's a pretty good air normals but the biggest issue with him is that in order to close the gap you usually have to use command dash and one of the biggest issues that command dash uses blood meter and i feel now the only times you ever get blood rage which actively is an is a, is a ability that actively fucks you um after it activates um, 
The only time you ever get Blood Rage is in the most important situations, which in my opinion is obviously like the worst time for that to fucking happen, right? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Blood mode, but like Blood Rage mode, I felt like 70% of the time was fine. Like in my opinion, um, the sword normals and stuff. Like once I figured it out, I was like, oh, okay. I stopped going to blood mode as much because I realized, okay, I can do this combo. And then I got a, and then instead of dashing up and getting Oki and risking on the command grab, I could do stand heavy slash and reduce my blood meter by like 50%, right? Shit like that. Um, which I like that. I like that idea. I think the biggest issue is, is that his other specials using so much blood meter means that when you go for a kill combo, uh, you kind of get fucked a lot of the time. Like you go blood mode right afterwards. And the reason why blood mode is actively just like a not good move for Nagoriyuki is uh, he constantly loses health, right? I don't know if like, you know, obviously I'm assuming nobody's seen it, but he loses health, a lot of health down to the point where he's at like 20%. And uh, it's pretty bad a lot of the times. Um, when I first started playing him, uh, there's a lot of times where I would win neutral and I would go for a big combo, and then I'd lose because I just lost that much health. Uh, I think, realistically, um, the only change I really want for Nagoya Yuki uh, is uh, make it so when you're in Blood Rage mode, your heavy slash attacks um, heal you for the amount of chip you do, right? So, like, like maybe 100% of all chip damage, 45% of damage you actually deal if you hit someone with it. Uh, now, my reasoning is it's like, it's not like you're gonna go out with full health after blood mode, but this would help stall the health bar a bit so you don't instantly get blown up when you activate it, right? So like, let's say you get a counter hit stand, stand heavy slash, right? Five heavy slash, um, and you're in blood mode, you would get like a quarter of your health bar back, but you'd still be draining your health. So you still end up with about like 70%, but I think that's what needs to happen. That way, there, that way you get fucked less when you're using the character, in my opinion. Um, and yeah, I think that's the way to go. And then, uh, last character is Anji. Look, I only ran in the three Anjis, and I'll be honest, that character feels like dog shit. Um, his Fujin doesn't even combo at max range on his normals. Like, I, it, it, he feels, he feels genuinely incomplete. Like, you know, Eno's game plan feels good, even though she doesn't feel 100% complete. But like, Anji feels like he's like 45% of a character right now. Um, his counter, his counter super seems incredibly strong, which I will uh, like admit. But Butterfly seems relatively weak if used like and from anywhere outside of like uh, Oki setups. Like like you know you sweep do it or you do um or you do throw into Butterfly, right? Uh, but yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's I didn't see a lot of good, uh, good Anjis. Maybe he actually was good, but that's what I've got. But yeah, this is uh, what I've got for my for my Guilty Gear Strive tier list. Uh, thanks, thank you guys for watching.